Today, folks, we're going to look at a flight of a Cessna 172 out of Craven County Airport, code EWN. I chose this location because it's where my flight school is located. The call sign 733 Uniform Foxtrot is a salute to the Cessna, which I spent many hours flying at this airport. Um, I'll include links to the uh, flight school in the description below. Uh, we will start uh, an airplane at, at airplane parking and we will cover all items in the checklist for the safe operation of the aircraft. Um, what you're going to see here in a few minutes is me testing out some of the surfaces. So you may see me move the ailerons up, left aileron up, um, right aileron up, flaps down, flaps back up, and then the elevators and potentially the rudder. Uh, and that's just making sure we have uh, good control surfaces and um, that the aircraft has flight worthiness. In real life, we would a pre-flight inspection would require a walk around of the aircraft. We're just looking for any type of damage, any signs of rust, any signs of fatigue on the metal. Um, the airworthiness and registration must be uh, in plain view. They're usually kept in a pocket behind one of the chairs or maybe kind of down on the side where the door is. And um, we check weight and balance both the um, both myself and my co-pilot weigh about the same, and we're going to be carrying 70 pounds of cargo on this flight. We switch magnetos off, and we switch avionics master off, um, and this is to just check the battery power of the system. Um, typically, we would uh, check both wings gas tanks to ensure proper fuel, and that's judged by the color, and also to get rid of any condensation or potentially water which may have accumulated in the tanks. Um, so both the right and the left tanks would normally be checked. We don't have that option in the simulator. So what you just saw was magnetos off, avionics master off, battery master on, and I believe we're done with this. So we are engaging the parking brake now. And we're probably gonna move towards uh, cranking up the engine. That's gonna be mixture 100% rich. Um, throttle at approximately about 25% and then we're going to move the magnetos from their off position over into the start position until the engine gets going and then it will return back to both. See that that's checking those gauges. So some additional items we would do that full inspection complete. We would brief our passengers. Uh, we would make sure that uh, seats and seat belts are adjusted and secure. We would check all circuit breakers, make sure no circuit breakers are blown. We would check um, electrical and avionics by turning them off. And we make sure our fuel selector switch is set to both. And I believe I will show you that in just a moment. Once I get my altimeter calibrated correctly. Okay, we're now getting ready to taxi. It's important to make sure your parking brake is off if you're going to taxi.
and from here we're going to be taxiing towards our active runway um, prior to the whole short line for the active runway we're going to come to a full stop we're going to engage that parking brake and then we're going to go through a process known as an engine run-up which is not shown in flight simulator but is honestly probably the most important uh, step that needs to be done aside from the inspection the most important step that needs to be done prior to um, getting your aircraft ready to take off Okay, you can see there that is the whole short line for the active runway. We're going to come to a full stop. And the checklist says the parking brake must be set, seats back, seat belts on, close all cabin doors and windows, flight controls will be free and correct, the mixture will be set to rich. This is me checking to make sure everyone's got the seat belt on. Good job, everyone mixture set to rich and then we are going to I will up to 1700 rpms and what you saw there was just again another confirmation of the controls working apologize for some of those quick movements, um, that is just due to the, the nature of my controllers. So now when we idle the engine up to almost maximum RP, um, we are going to then go from both magnetos to the left magneto and then to the right magneto. So we should have seen that uh, we had a vacuum, um, instru engine instruments were check, altimeter was charging, the low voltage light was off, um, we throttle back down to idle now at this point, we would set GPS and navigation, lights as required, and then when we're ready to approach the runway, we're going to release the parking brake again and taxi onto the active runway. The purpose of the engine run up is if the engine was going to have a catastrophic failure, you would want the catastrophic failure to happen on the ground prior to takeoff um, for the safe operation of the aircraft. Last thing you want is to be, you know, in the middle of a takeoff and all of a sudden to have some something happen to your engine where you are then looking at a um, loss of thrust during a takeoff climb. So that is the, the reason why we do an engine run up every time before we approach that active runway. And as you can see here, I'm checking the dialogue between the tower, which is kind of computer generated. Um, at this point, I would be asking tower for clearance for takeoff, uh, but because this is a game, uh, it doesn't think to do the in um, engine run up, and so I don't have to do that extra stuff. So now we're going to be getting on the active runway. We always want to check both left and right. Um, the reason why I did it externally and not internally is that the wings can 
block a lot of your field of vision, but we want to make sure there are no approaching aircraft to this runway. So our pre-takeoff check checklist is a mixture of rich um, or whatever suitable for the altitude. Uh, elevator is set for takeoff. Flaps are up. Low voltage is off. Lights as required. Uh, emergency procedures should have been briefed. Uh, time will be noted for our logbook. And then brakes released. In just a moment here, you're going to see normal takeoff, which will be flaps at zero strobe lights on, transponder at ATL, carb heat cold, and then with the throttle we will gently increase that throttle all the way to 100% throttle. Um, at a speed of approximately 63 miles an hour or 55 ki um, AS, that is our rotation speed. So when we achieve that speed we can lift the nose off the ground and we will let physics work its magic. The climb airspeed is going to be about 81 to 92 miles per hour. So once we are up in the loft, we want to be in that range in order to have optimal climb with minimal risk of what's known as a power on stall. So again, I'm checking my lighting. Uh, one thing I will prepare you for in just a few moments when we do the takeoff roll, um, this simulator does not have auto rudder set up, meaning that I actually have um, a you know, control surface that would, would act as the rudder. Uh, because of that, when I go to full throttle, you will see that the P factor will try to pull the airplane to one side um, and then I will try to correct for that and sadly with simulators I tend to overcorrect just a little bit but um, you'll see and it's one of those nuances. We should be staying right down that center line. Okay, we've reached our nose up. And we are airborne. We want to make sure we keep that climb airspeed between 81 and 92 miles per hour until we reach um, our altitude, which I, I believe I went for 2000. Um, and you want to stay aligned with the active runway. So you don't want to, if the wind's blowing you, you don't want to um, get too far off the course of that compass heading for that runway until you have cleared the airport. So now we are on... Tower Cessna November 733, Uniform Foxtrot, 800 feet to land. Cessna November 733, Uniform Foxtrot, New Bird Tower. Altimeter Tree, 0.17, Wind Tree, 2015. Fly left traffic, runway 4. Cessna Tree, Uniform Foxtrot, Wind Tree, 2.0 at 1.5. Clear to land, runway 4. So Tower just knows I'm coming back to land at my home airport. Um, on this flight, we are going to um, take off. We're going to climb to about 2,000 feet. Then we will turn to a heading of 210, which is going to take us towards uh, Catfish Lake. Cessna Tree Uniform Foxtrot, did you copy? Clear 
to land runway for Cessna Tree Uniform Foxtrot. Um, the reason why I'm, I'm aiming towards Catfish Lake is that to our east is a is MCAS Cherry Points. That is a, a military installation, and they have controlled airspace all around them. And those three lakes that you might be able to see just off to the side of my propeller, um, those lakes actually fall under the military airspace. So, in, just for navigational purposes, I'm heading towards the small isolated lake known as Catfish Lake. That keeps me in uh, good standing. Um, once I get to Catfish Lake, uh, I will then be turning to a heading of 270. Um, then we'll be looking for two landmarks, Sutter Field and Hood Field. Um, once we see those, we can vector to zero, um, and this should get us with, back within visual range of EWN, they burn. So if you can see just off the left side of my propeller, that is Catfish Lake. One thing I might point out is because I actually have a physical flight control surface, um, I do get rid of the yoke inside the cabin um, just so I can see some of those extra uh, switches and panels a little bit better without having a, a yoke in my way since I have a physical yoke. And I'm just now checking on my passengers, which are not checking on that cargo, that 70 pounds of cargo I got on board. There is um, Cherry Point. And those lakes are artificial man-made lakes, part of the Croatan National Forest. And we are currently flying over Catfish Lake, at least we will be in a moment. And there's Cherry Point and the lakes that fall into Cherry Point areas. level of detail in Microsoft Flight Simulator because it's all pulled from satellites it is really second to none. Um, that road there is a dirt road called the County Line Road. Um, it's huge and um, it is as accurate as you're seeing that in this. Also the road that paralleled Catfish Lake, uh, which I'm now turning over, is also completely identical to how it is in real life to include the two. Uh, areas that are clearing some water, which is where people use to launch their canoes.
So as you can see right now, my throttle is probably 70-75%. My airspeed was at a good 90. Um, it's increased a little bit just because of some of those maneuvers. And uh, as you can see, I'm doing a reasonably good job um, maintaining my altitude. It's not, not as perfect as, as I would like it to be, but... The aircraft does have a tendency to want to pitch the nose up. Um, I personally like for the trim to have a slight uh, bias towards uh, the nose going up. Some people might feel differently, but I'd rather put a little um, forward pressure on the yoke to hold her steady than to have to be constantly pulling back on the yoke. But if you hear some clicking noises, that is me adjusting the trim of the aircraft. And then, of course, also idle is altitude so or excuse me um, throttle is altitude so by reducing the throttle you can find that sweet spot a little bit easier Tower Cessna November 7 Tree Tree Uniform Fox Drive is unfamiliar with the area. Request directions to the airport. Cessna Tree Uniform Fox Drive Airport is 2 o'clock, 4 miles. So I now have gained visual confirmation of my destination airport. We are flying over New Bern, New Bern proper, so I'm looking at kind of the major area, and then it's a little bit closer to where that river meets the sound is downtown New Bern. So I just checked the fuel selector switch to make sure it's on both. Um, also checked my flaps to make sure they're still at zero, which they are. And checked my trim tab to make sure there's the airplane's not going to fight against me when I'm ready to land. And you can see out that window, there is our destination. Again, the jerkiness, I apologize, it's the hat button on my yoke. It's just, I haven't quite, I haven't quite figured out how to make it transition smoothly yet. So, 
apologize for the jerkiness. So I am approaching what would be the downwind leg. I'm a little far away from it, but this would be the downwind leg. Um, in anticipation, I've gone ahead and extended flaps to 10%. That increases my drag and um, also allows me to be at a slower speed without the chance of stalling. So I'm now approaching downwind leg. S some could say that I put the slaps in a little earlier than some pilots would, but it's, in my opinion, it's pilot's discretion. Any pilot wants to avoid a stall um, if possible, so you definitely don't want to have a, a power off stall, you can recover from those, but power off stall is a dicey situation. Um, and then the worst is what's known as a power on stall, um, in which you really have to require on physics to uh, be on your side for that one. There's a good view of our airport that we're coming up to. Now for our checklist for landing. So throttle is as desired. And again, throttle is altitude. So if you slow your throttle down, you're going to lose altitude. If you increase your throttle, you're going to gain altitude. Um, mixture is adjust for smooth operations. So for us here on the coast, that's going to be uh, mixture rich. Fuel selector will be set at both. Uh, flaps as desired. But if you're under 127 um, miles an hour, you should go with 10. If you're under 98 miles, an hour you can go between 10 and the full 30. Uh, altimeter set, navigation GPS set, seats back and upright, seats and belts secured and locked, mixture rich, landing lights on, taxi lights on, autopilot off. And then we are turning to base leg and we'll be turning to final in just a moment. see here we are beginning to get lined up on the runway and when we go to perform our touchdown um, main wheels will touch first on a tricycle gear airplane like this one that's the two that sit under the cabin once those two have touched then we gently lower the nose so that, that front wheel comes down and um, then pretty much idle out the throttle and allow the plane to come to a stop Uniform 
platform Foxtrot. Turn next taxiway. So ideally you'd want to make sure your touchdown is right on that center line. So that's definitely not my best landing, but it wasn't a, a bounce and it didn't require a go around. So at this point, we now go flaps up, transponder to standby, strobe lights to off, and then any other lights as required. So then we just follow ground instructions and we make sure that we taxi safely. So flaps usually go to back to zero and we want to burn off a lot of speed so that we're not you know, going 45 miles an hour down a taxiway. That's, that's a bit excessive. Decimal seven for Cessna Tree Uniform Foxtrot. In real life, when we get past those whole short lines, we would come to a full stop, and now is when we would contact ground services. And unfortunately, they don't have many options other than pushback, which we don't need. Um, some airports will have uh, taxi to gate, taxi to general aviation parking, and may even offer amenities. Amenities such as we feel like. Wind, 320 to 15. Visibility, 10. Sky condition, few clouds of 2,200 feet, ceiling 4,400 feet. Well, folks, I want to thank you all for joining me on this short flight at um, EWN, that's uh, Craven County's airport. A special thanks to D2 Flight Academy, um, the new Air Flight School, which sparked my love for flying. Um, and I'll include a link to their website in my description. If you're in North Carolina, they have the best flight school on the East Coast. I hope you all enjoyed this content. Uh, was there anything that I could have done better? Please let me know in the comments. If you like this type of content, uh, please leave a like and uh, consider subscribing. Uh, if there's any ideas or challenges or unique airports that you guys would like to see me fly at, I'd be more than happy to take on those challenges. Um, and as I continue my uh, my private pilot's competence and become you know, more versed in other aircraft, I will feel much more confident in flying aircraft other than just the Cessna family. So, yeah, uh, don't. Yeah. So I hope you all enjoyed this. Thank you so much for, for taking the time to check out the video, and I hope to see you in the next one.